Atlas Fallen is an open world action RPG with a whole lot of sand and a whole lot of mechanics. So I'm going to pass on some of the most useful things you need to know about its combat, momentum system, gear upgrades, and yes, even the sand itself. I'm Alex, and let's dig into it. First, effectively using that Dune Cleaver of yours. Its basic moveset consists of fairly short range axe and hammer strikes. At medium momentum, the attacks are a little bit slower, but the Dune Cleaver physically grows in size, extending the reach of all of those attacks. At high momentum, a bit slower but larger again, and each attack is going to hit with massive damage and impact. Destroying the stationary sand right now. The Dune Cleaver functions a bit different than the other weapons, having two separate groupings of stats for its axe form and its hammer form. Tapping attack will do the quicker axe strikes, and holding the button or using your aerial slam attack will use the hammer form. The hammer strikes have super high impact, which can knock enemies back and completely interrupt their outgoing attack animations, canceling their action. The Dune Cleaver pairs very well with the Hammer Blast Essence Stone as well. When you reach that second bar of your momentum, that will make all of your hammer attacks detonate an AoE blast around you, with no cooldown on how often this can happen. Larger enemies have independent body parts highlighted in red that you'll need to destroy before they actually die. The frequent blast coming off of your hammer with this effect will be whittling down the health of all of the body parts, not just the main section you're targeting. There's a really solid early game armor set you can snag right after you unlock your second air dash. As soon as you can cross the broken bridge gap to the west, go to this location. You'll find a side quest there from this lady that got Amazon Prime the wrong top. Lucky for us, it's exactly our size. With her side quest set as your active quest, down on the D-pad will highlight the five little golden book thingies you'll need to complete this quest. Head back to her and turn those in to receive the Scout's Armor set. Compared to your starter armor, every base stat of this is higher, with a focus on the offensive stat. You can upgrade this set three times to boost its stats and unlock its unique armor trait, which reduces the cooldown of all of your equipped active abilities. Also, to activate its additional stat bonus, equip just two Momentum Essence Stones onto your bar. The light blue colored ones will be momentum based, and after you have two of those on, you will unlock the additional 9 extra offense, putting this armor set at 51 total offense when it's maxed out. Early game, this is a lot of extra damage output. The best ways to use your sand whip. The basic moveset of this weapon consists of wide sweeping whip attacks. At medium momentum, the whip starts looking a little bit more like a sword, with larger attacks that reach even further. At high momentum, it pretty much is a big ol' sword that launches shards with each attack, creating a damaging circle of joy around you. The sand whip is low in impact, but has the highest momentum gain. This makes it the ideal weapon to initiate combat with, to quickly build up momentum and power your higher damaging abilities. It's also very effective for aerial combat and gives you one of the best mobility options. Holding down the attack button will hook you over to an enemy if they're within reach, and out of this, you attack with this faster dagger-like moveset. This is great for closing the distance and building up momentum with that faster sequence of attacks. Since the Sand Whip is probably going to be your main momentum builder, I recommend socketing momentum gaining essence stones like Momentum Alliance and Unstable Generation at the very far left of your momentum gauge. That'll ensure that you're building up bonus momentum right at the start of a fight and all throughout it. This lets you access your other active abilities earlier and gets you to that highest level of your shatter attack faster as well. Each time you upgrade an armor set, you'll gain a perk token. You'll want to acquire as many of these as soon as you can. It's worthwhile to grab every armor set, even lower tier ones you don't even need. Actually, especially those, because lower rank sets cost less to upgrade. Use that to your advantage to accumulate some easy perk points. 
Perks unlock some really strong passive effects that can increase your resource gain, improve your healing, provide various buffs for using certain types of essence stones, or if you make it all the way down to the bottom right, that'll give you a whole additional charge for your idol. Now a weapon that you'll get a little bit later, the Knuckle Dust. Its basic moveset is a sequence of quick short range punches. At medium momentum, you get extra arms added to the attack with a bit of extra reach. At high momentum, there's even more arms added to each of your attacks. The Knuckle Dust is the fastest multi-hitting weapon type, lacking somewhat in momentum gain and range. However, its charged attack, just like the Sand Whips, is a great tool for closing the distance to a target. You don't have to fully charge this attack to use its homing properties, and just a half a second hold down of the attack button lets you quickly launch over with a nice little smack. Along your sandy shoe filled travels, you'll be able to find a special vendor, located by his kite flying up in the air. This traveling vendor sometimes has side quests for you and has some pretty useful stuff in stock, but it's also the best place to sell your artifacts, aka sand junk. Unlike other vendors, this guy will periodically change what type of artifacts he's seeking and pay more for them, indicated by their price being in green. I recommend not just selling all of your artifacts randomly just to any vendor, and instead hold on to them to sell to the traveling vendor when he's offering the higher payout. Each weapon has a unique attack after you do two or more attacks with another weapon. So Sand Whip Sand Whip Dune Cleaver does this hammer swing into a downward smash. Two alternate weapon hits followed by the Sand Whip does this backward spin attack. Two alternate hits into the Knuckle Dust does a downward punch. There are some other ways you can shortcut into these unique attacks though, like three charged Dune Cleaver attacks in a sequence ending with that unique hit. After a charged Sand Whip attack, if you input a charge attack again, you'll do that spin attack out of it. By the way, if you press the opposite direction during the Sand Whip spin attack input, you can actually fly forward instead of backward. And with the Knuckle Dust, simply attack out of a dodge to get that Sand Punch. Whichever weapon you have in your main slot here on the left does matter and changes a few things. For one, the main weapon will dictate the attack sequence used for your launch and slam attacks. This attack button has two main purposes, easily sending you up into the air to start a combo or to slam downward, which can also pop enemies out of hiding if they're buried underground. A good thing to pair with this move is the Fractured Field Essence Stone. With a 20 second cooldown, every slam attack you do will create an area of damaging projectiles that can add some nice extra DPS. The other thing that your main weapon slot dictates is your momentum expending shatter attack. The Dune Cleaver shatter attack at high momentum will do this giant double hammer strike when it's set as your main weapon. The Sand Whip shatter will do a sequence of quick spin attacks and the Knuckle Dust Shatter will do this long multi-hitting pummel attack when it's set as your main. Now a little bonus thing that could be maybe missed or just forgotten. In your bestiary, be bestiary, beast, I've said that too many times. The book with the monster stuff, every single monster type will also have a unique essence stone you can unlock from them. Like the diver here, having a chance to drop that fractured field essence stone I just explained. That's pretty much it, but instead of a normal outro, I'm kind of in the mood for some random sand facts. How about you? Sand is a vital component to the mixture that makes concrete and mortar, so you might be on sand right now. Humans are buoyant enough to not sink past their waist in quicksand, so you're safe. Go find some. Just don't fall face first. Some sandy areas of Earth can reach nearly 160 degrees Fahrenheit on their surface. Silicon is also derived from sand, which is used to manufacture computer chips, so you might be looking at sand right now. Since sand is so useful, in certain parts of the world, there's a real-life sand mafia. It gets dark. Sand can act as a natural filter to purify water. Might just be a little bit sandy. The color of sand is not always yellowish. It can also look white, pink, green, black, and even purple, depending on its mineral composition. 
Sand is the world's most mined resource, and every year, roughly 50 billion tons are extracted. This is equivalent to a wall 88 feet high by 88 feet wide that stretches around the entire Earth. Whoa. Alright, that's actually it. I'm Alex, and thanks for checking this out today. And thanks, Sand.